Good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the NASDAQ 100 for Tuesday, March the 8th, 2022. An incredibly volatile day again in the markets. And when I'm talking about volatility, I'm not talking about premium, as we refer to as the volatility of an option. This is just in the speed at which these moves took place today. Um, it wasn't always the easiest trading day, but if you were able to just follow the price action and stay in touch with what was happening, it was an extremely profitable day. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's get started. I've made, which is not really going to amount to a significant change to the count or to the labeling, but I've made a change on both here on the NASDAQ and also on the S&P. So starting here with the NASDAQ, we continue to look at the current decline as a minor third wave. And within this minor third wave, as I've described before, it is going to consist of five waves of minute degree. And I had before put one minute one and minute two here, put minute three here, and was looking for a minute four, which should have finished right about there, but it didn't. They raced it up. So this, when compared to the third wave, which would have been this, was too big. And it really almost gotten up to the 618 level. So I take a step back. And it is in my own personal experience in dealing with Elliot, if I'm counting too fast, in other words, the degree, I'm counting it too fast, then I'll, I'll, I'll realize it when I get to that fourth wave and it comes in big. And I'm like, well, that doesn't fit to my whole picture. So I took a step back and I realized that I can still count five down to this low, and but I moved the minute wave one all the way down. And a couple of reasons that I've done that now, if I would be looking for a massive fifth wave down, and <clears throat> while that still is possible, I think that it's not in relationship when I, when I move out to like the four hour chart and I'm looking at the form. Here is intermediate wave one. That's the intermediate wave that we have to come in bigger than. And right now that is saying 100% is 12,198. Well, if we're in that fifth wave and that fifth wave is starting off of 30, 13,601, we're talking over a 1500 point drop. And I thought, wow. And it really needs to be bigger then. So it just stopped fitting and in the degree to which I was counting. So now I'm gonna go back to that hourly chart. And that's why I did my double take and I took another look and this is what I came up with. So it doesn't necessarily change the decline, it just gives, it gives the room to the move and the count to get to where my larger Fibonacci extensions are telling me. So here we are. If indeed this is minute one, minute two, this rally was incredible. And we started off like we got up to there and then they pulled it down and they were getting nearly to that 31, 13,101 low. I'm like, well, great, four. And then we're on starting into five. No, it halted right at double bottom. And then it launched, it launched higher and then continued to go. It reached 13,666, so it's just like, okay, that's a bad number for a lot of people, but still for this market, it ended up being a bad number. So that's where I believe this corrective bounce finished. And then I kept thinking it's too big to be a four. In, in conjunction with what I was balancing it against, if this was minute two, minute one and minute two, and this was minute three and minute four, cannot retrace, should not retrace 50 to 62% of the third wave. And that's what happened. Now, if this whole thing was the third wave, then yes, 
I could see um, with that you know, small of a correction taking place. So one, two, three, four, five, minute wave one, ABC, minute wave two, we started down. We are continuing now to push lower. They attempted once again to move in with this. There's been a lot of talk uh, concerning that the money flow, money flow. So now here, I'm measuring it right here. That's one measure of it, not the most perfect measure. But you can see they came in, they tore them and dumped a bunch of money in. And so they're really kind of basing it on a lot of things, but just basically on the money flow and then this, this wedge that I, I got a report on that, that happened uh, here. And I'm like, I don't really see it, but okay. So a lot of different reasons. But once again, I think that the market is early. I don't think that, that it's the correct time to be tossing your money in. Now, here's another thing that goes along with money, new money coming in. Normally on the second, Monday and Tuesday of a month, that is normally when new 401k or you know, the 401k money has been put into the 401k and now they're gonna transfer it over and that's when it gets put to work. So yesterday and today are typical days where we see a strong upside move as this money gets put into the market. Now, add to that a lot of calls with the bottoms being in, a lot of calls for different things, and you just get this extra boost like we did today. Nonetheless, it was rejected. It was rejected not once, but twice by the market. And therefore, I, I continue to say, you might be early. You, th these buyers could be absolutely right. In six months from now, maybe we will be sitting at new highs. But when I'm listening to people saying that we've bottomed and that the next move is the possibility of moving again to new all-time highs, I just stand back and say, I don't see that at all. I think that if we're doing this on the basis of, oh, it's a relief, because now we're, we're supposedly having you know, different talks between Russia and the Ukraine, and maybe we'll, they will bit peace and everybody will shake hands and they'll pull all the troops back and reparations will be made to rebuild the Ukraine, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's not a good enough reason to buy because in all honesty, the 800 pound gorilla in the room is inflation. And whether you wanna look at it any which way you can, I just encourage you to keep an eye on crude oil. It's traded, it's trading $125 after touching $130 today. $130. The high right now is $146. We get above $146. We're in new uncharted waters. Like, what do we do now? This is inflationary. I live in the state of California. Our gas is over $5, well over $5. We're heading towards six, a gallon. Now, for the balance of the country, I'm hearing that it's basically permanently now above four bucks. These are huge. Now, whether they want to include those in inflation figures or not, or whether they really want to address it as inflation or not, the reality is it is. Next, take a look at what's happening in the commodity markets. Take a look at the price of wheat. Take a look at the price of corn. Take a look at the price of soybeans. Inflationary. Why? Because there's been a disruption. There's been a disruption to crops. There's been a disruption to getting wheat to market, getting it to where it needs to be so that producers can convert it and turn it into bread, cookies, flour, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we have inflation. And whether we want to consider it consumer, which it is, and also producer, which it is, is being twisted and given back to, to the market in a way that I don't think it's being taken seriously, or they don't want us to take it very seriously. So that's the 800 pound gorilla. And by the way, it took a break, came back, went out, put on a new dress, put some new lipstick on, came back and sat down, hoping that no one would recognize it. And I, I'm not going to play into that because, again, I'm a, I'm a technical trader, but I have to consider that when they're coming in thinking that we have bottomed and that 
a quarter point. This is the other thing I was hearing today. A quarter point uh, rise in interest rates is what we'll probably get in March. And that's already been priced in. The Fed won't raise more than that. We got a war going on. It's like, really? The Fed's task is not to balance out our inflation rate with what's going on over there and how that will affect the market. The Fed's job is to tackle and tame inflation. And that isn't by being squeamish about raising the rates. So again, if they do, we're likely gonna get a gigantic rally. But if they don't, it's just gonna reconfirm that inflation is real. Regardless of what's happening in, in the Ukraine, which is an extremely unfortunate situation, it's still inflation is real in this country. And now we're seeing it spread to other areas of the world. So there's a lot going on. And I just think, look, stop looking at it through colored glasses here. We've got to look at it realistically. And so that's why I believe the market rejected today's buying twice and now continues to head lower. This is a period during the day, this, the, we, the, the exchanges have given an extra hour. So from the close until five o'clock Eastern, two o'clock Pacific, everybody, the funds and the, all those guys, they get to come in and do what they need to do. So I was fully anticipating that we brought the market lower, but I thought once that starts, they're gonna start pushing it back up. They tried and now we're making additional lows, not all you know, daily lows, but just lows for the move down. So closing down here. Now let's also just keep in mind that the NASDAQ was up close to 300 or just over 300 points at these highs. The NASDAQ closed down 130, or it's getting ready to close down 135. The Dow was up 555 it closed down 185. These moves were rejected by the market. So one, two, that means that we're now, again, I know I've talked about this a lot and I, I bear with me because we are trading in a fluid market that's extremely volatile. And there's a lot of volatility that comes in and out according to what's happening in the news or information that we can get. But that doesn't take away what I think is coming. So if this is minute one and this is minute two, we again are just beginning the third wave. So acceleration, we got it. So everything continues to fall into line, whether I'm considering it a five, whether I'm considering it a three, both should begin to see acceleration. And that's what kicked it off again. Acceleration right out of the highs, bringing it all the way back down. Now, we're, we're back under 13,200. So we are 70 points away from the bottom of, of where we were, 13,101. And then we start breaking down. So, what can we look for or expect in this third wave? Well, if we're just balancing it against the minor third wave, which is still in progress, then we're looking at where minor three would equal minor one at 12,354. I think now I'm more confident to say, that's not gonna be a total third wave in here. We're looking for this third wave to likely get down to here or somewhere in here. And so that's over a thousand points from here. So a thousand points brings us down to here. And so we still face a very, very difficult challenge of keep continuing to boost the market only to let it drop. You know, eventually, you know, a reality does set in and, and what's going on in the market will be balanced by what we actually have as data, what we have as what the Fed's going to do for interest rates, what we have as inflation numbers. So everything should balance out. Now, again, I'm looking for the market to continue to accelerate lower 
now. So again, bounces at this stage should not anywhere, anywhere resemble this. This was a clean three waves up, A, B, C. We should get five down. That would be a minimum five down off of that level. And this might be this first little one, and that's the two. And now we're dropping in an internal third. That means we start to accelerate even more. And so I'd be looking for it to break 13,101, to break 12,955, to break 12,853, 12,790. Break these levels as it continues to move lower. So yeah, I do think we could have a little bit of a panic feel to, to the selling again. Similar to what we saw yesterday, where the market suddenly is down 700 or 800 in the Dow, or four to 500 in the, in the NASDAQ. Well, I think that could even get worse. What I do put out there as a caution flag, keep an eye on the percentage. The percentage the market is down. 5% is a circuit breaker. So if you're trading and we're moving lower, keep your eye on that percentage down because the computers automatically shut it off. And you don't necessarily wanna be in a position either way to when that happens, because there's no way to get out. So here we are. Now, what? You can see here we are close to the close and they're gonna, the, the markers are there. We're gonna to try to mark it up. Very interesting what they do. Um, in any case, I am looking for that. So again, I believe the pullbacks will be shallow and that's where I use my moving averages. So right now I'm gonna add one more, come on computer. Um, I'm gonna add one more extension and that's gonna be for this, minor third wave. So the first thing I wanna do, unfortunately I'm gonna take this larger one off. So all we're dealing is with this. And then I'm gonna put the first one there. I'm gonna bring it down to here, take it up to there. And let's take a look. Okay, so we continue to get that Minute three would be equal to minute one, right in that same area. 12,370, 12,354. So right in there is where three would be equal to one. My feeling is that we get down into here. I really do. Now, I think we get below that. So first of all, I think we break 13,000. Then I think we start heading for breaking 12,000. Now it might, you know, the third wave, this could, this internal third, now yeah, could get down to here, but it has to be a little bit more. So I'm really be, be looking for here. Then we're gonna get a bounce and a fourth wave and then another fifth wave down. And then we're up to that minor three. So that is where we're looking now again, for the entire wave, minor three, would be 1.618 of minor one, all the way down at 11,095. Yeah, it's just plain 95. So we're, we're really working with, with getting lower now. So what gets adjusted, not only the count, but what or the labeling, what gets adjusted are gonna be the, the Fibonacci extensions and, and the relationships between. So these always were there, but now they're matching up cleaner with actually what I think is going on. So minor three, down here. Minute three, I think we get you know, down possibly only to that level. Then we bounce and then we come down in a fifth. But again, we're looking at a larger fifth. So I'm thinking that if we get closer down here, put in a four and then a five could get us down into here or significantly lower into here. So our zone to complete both the minor three and the these divisions or the 
five waves down of minute level degree, I think are gonna come into here. Or minute three, looking into here, down to here. A four and a five brings us into here. So again, I am looking now for some more serious acceleration to the downside. I think we've had our pop. We've done the corrective wave that the market suggested and indicated that we needed to do. So we're back to looking for the, the bulk of the decline to pick up. I'm going to end it there because, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to really get into uh, a fundamental or even a news-based analysis. Uh, so I'm going to leave it there, continue to trade smart, continue to use these moving averages. And now the, the newer levels, which sort of match up with what we already had, because remember, we had this minor, we always had the minor, and now we're just getting where we are now in closer connection to that minor degree uh, finish. Our next update will be on Wednesday the 9th.